Hey, what's up guys? Rahul here for Roman Realm. Welcome back to my channel. Some of you may know that I work as a marine engineer on motion ships. And right off the bat, I want to say that I'm really glad that a lot of you found my recent video about the fuel injector really helpful. Thanks for that. And one of the most common follow-up questions on that topic was regarding the pressure testing of the fuel injectors. So in today's video, we'll go straight to that. Let's go. Right, so here is a test machine that we have on board for the pressure testing of the fuel injector. I have put the injector in place, but it still needs to be secured and connected with oil pipes to the testing machine. I'm going to set it up now. There will come some securing nuts on top. The machine itself needs to be powered up and supplied with compressed air for functioning. Once the setup is complete, there are a series of tests which we need to perform to simulate whether or not the fuel injector is working as intended. Five different tests, A, B, C, D and E are to be done. This is a two-stroke engine, so the test F is not applicable for us. In case you're wondering what are these numbers on the machine, well, they've not been written by me, but those numbers correspond to some different hydraulic pressures at which the different tests are to be carried out. Okay, now the fuel injector is all set. This is the return line which is connected to a container which is then connected to a small tank for easy disposal of the used oil. You can use a can or a drum etc, everything is fine. This is the inlet. Oil is coming from the high pressure pump inside which is an air driven pump. The oil is pumped in, then it goes to this connection and then into the injector. These two nuts here are actually called spring tensioners and maybe you already know this, but the tightening should be in a way that they are flushing. Right now the injector is under tension and that's how it should be when it's in the engine. The first test is called the pre-fill. The idea of pre-fill is that you purge out all the air that is in the injector so that it becomes full of oil for the subsequent tests. So to start with the pre-fill, close the relief valve and then open the air to start pumping. The idea is to keep it pumping at low stroke so that all the air gets purged. And when it is full of oil, then we proceed to the next test. So now we'll wait till oil starts oozing out from here. And in the meantime, also see that if there's a leak somewhere. Shouldn't be any because there's hardly any pressure right now, but still, if something is not properly tightened, then oil will leak out from there. That'll be the first thing. It takes maybe 30 to 40 seconds in total and oil will start to come out from the return line. Initially, the flow will be slightly erratic. Maybe there will be also some air bubbles. This one looks fine because I can see continuous flow of oil as per the stroke and non-stroke cycle of the pump. But based on how it looks, I think it's safe to say that the purging is finished. Now I will reduce the air to stop the pump and then open the relief valve to release the pressure. Next is the opening pressure test. For this I have to change the knob to test B and then press reset. Close the relief valve and increase the air. As the pump starts pumping, the pressure will go up. I've uh, cracked open the lid a little bit so that it's visible on the camera. As I turn the knob clockwise, the pressure is increasing. Also keep checking that nothing is leaking. Based on the instruction manual, the injection pressure is around 330 to 380 bar, but I'm aiming to be around 375 380 bar. Okay, so we are within the range. Let's see at what pressure the injection actually happens. There it was. The equipment says 389 bar, but just one injection is never really conclusive. So I'm gonna give it a try a few more times and to really observe what exactly is the injector doing. 357 now, now 367. 
It's uh, all in range, but I still want to try it a few more times. All I'm doing is pressing the reset button and it's triggering the sequence all over again. This time was 381, 377. So roughly, let's say this is around 370 to 375 bar, which is okay because it is still within the range of between 330 to 380 bar and it's more on the higher side. If this was quite low, for example, 330 or 335 bar, then there are shims which can be placed inside, which basically increases the injection pressure, depending on the shim thickness, of course, maybe 15 bar or 25 bar as required. Likewise, if the pressure was way too high, then we need to remove some shims. Of course, spring and other components also need to be checked. But if all is okay, then usually shims are added or removed so as to fine tune the injection pressure. Okay, so this was the opening pressure test. Now I'll release the pressure and of course I'll hit reset before moving on to the next test. Next one is actually the nozzle sealing test. So let's say that the injection happened around 370 bar, 370 bar. So for this test, we need to raise the pressure to 30 to 50 bar below the injection pressure and then check how the injector is responding. Okay, so slow and steady, I'm raising the pressure. I'll go till 340 and then I'm gonna check if there's any leak from the fuel nozzle. If there's no leak, then it means that this test is okay. As you can see, someone has written here 10 to 20 bar. Actually, you should never go by these random numbers which are written. Always check the instruction manual yourself. Even this 380. Ideally, yes, injection pressure should be 380, but as per the instruction manual, it can be between 330 to 380 bar. Of course, preferably close to the higher end of the range, but 360, 370, 380, all are fine. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly 380. Okay, so now I'm going to proceed to the next test, which is the venting non-return valve test. Same steps, reset, release pressure, switch knob to the desired test, Close the pressure release valve and raise the pressure. So in this test, we are actually checking the non-return valve for its function. We have already dismantled and overhauled the non-return valve, but this one is the pressure test. And as per the instruction manual for this test, we have to raise the pressure to 160 bar. At 160 bar, the non-return valve should cut in and depressurize the whole thing. So it means that once 160 bar is reached, then I should not be able to raise the pressure anymore, like how I'm doing now by turning this knob in clockwise direction. That sound confirms it. The system is working. Now, even if I try to raise the pressure, nothing happens. So test number four is okay. For the next test, I'll have to remove this hose meant for oil return and plug this outlet. Okay, for the final test now, the knob is on E, which is for the O-ring seal test. Same procedure as the other tests. I start by pressing reset, then close the relief valve and start raising the pressure. The idea here is to check that the seal rings inside the injector are working and not leaking. So the oil return channel is plugged here. I've used a normal brass plug of matching thread. Next step is to raise the pressure to 105 bar. At that pressure, the pump will cut out and then the idea is that the pressure should be maintained and not start dropping rapidly. Okay, so the pressure is almost 105. Okay, uh, now at 105, the pump has cut out. Now we just have to see that the pressure maintains. It's at 104 now, it's fine. Of course, uh, this plug is also not a perfect seal, so there's a small drop of oil as you can see that has leaked, so 104 is okay. Overall, it, it looks fine. If there was a problem, this pressure would drop really fast. I mean, this wouldn't go like this, one bar in 20 seconds. If there was a problem, the pressure would be really, uh, you know, like quickly falling towards zero, like within 10 to 12 seconds. So with this rate of drop, I think uh, it looks okay. But I have to say that during the overhauling uh, of some other injectors, the pressure doesn't drop below 104 at all, like how it's happening here. So based on this test, I, I'm thinking that the head 
this is the head has started to get worn out and the next time when this injector is overall maybe we can get a new head but anyways this is good enough to be used for this time okay so that was a pre-fill the opening pressure test the nozzle sealing test the venting non-return valve test and the o-ring seal test the injector performed well in all these tests and hence it can be considered ready for use the storage of the injectors which are already overall and ready to use is also an important consideration Ideally, you should smear the outer body of the injector with some protection grease and wrap the whole thing in a plastic bag. This not only will prevent rusting but also contamination because of the dust. It's also a good practice to put a small label on each injector or make an Excel sheet on the computer regarding the update or the final status on each injector. For example, an injector which is ready to use should have a label that says pressure tested to 380 or 385 or whatever is the specification on your ship to that pressure all found okay ready to use with a countersign of your name and signature something like that or a rank and signature uh, likewise if it was something which was uh, overall but not really complete then you can also say that okay uh, injector overall pressure tested found leaking some parts missing and you can give a short description of the part for example that the atomizer is missing or that the spring is missing or that the injector is uh, not tested these kind of things are best practices because it saves time for the next person of course when they come they see this label then they know exactly what is the status without actually having to do the whole thing again and then realize that oh this was already ready maybe only the pressure testing was remaining and so on okay so I've been getting few video requests from some of you and uh, I just want to clarify that sometimes I'm not so quick with these videos because it's just that sometimes there's time pressure and when I'm actually working on the machine, I don't really have a chance to document the whole process of overhauling the machine. And uh, sometimes it's just that the machine which you want me to make a video about is just running fine so I cannot really dismantle something just to make a video out of it. So keep the requests coming. I'll do my best to also keep these videos coming as frequently as I can. All right. And for today's video, I try to explain the fuel injector pressure testing procedure in a simple way. However, if you have a doubt or a follow-up question about this or any other topic uh, re regarding ships or machinery, feel free. Ask me, post as a comment, or you can also send me a message on Instagram. I'll try to clear your doubt as a comment, but if the topic is too big, I'll probably make another video. Speaking of video, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like. Doing that tells YouTube that this video has value. And for more such informative content, you can please subscribe to my channel. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Keep exploring. This is Rahul for Roma Realm and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.